I honestly don't like when these things happen and I'm going to tell you quite shortly why and what precisely. So first I'm going to introduce two AAOs because this is the first time I'm going to cover two AAOs in one video and yeah, of course it's from the same brand. We're going to talk about Lian Lee Galahad 2 Lite 360, which is this the RGB version that I have right here. This was already inside the build, so I took it out to test out Lian Lee Galahad 2 Lite 240 performance, which comes with two P28 fans. So we have RGB fans, we have P28, which are non-RGB. And it's quite interesting because, well, to be honest, I would really prefer to have two 360 AAOs in the benchmark so you could actually see the concrete difference uh, between two, well, basically one for showing off, even though the performance is there, and one for pure performance. So what's it all about? And when we take a look, why did they remove from the uh, hydro shift in terms of same fans as they have on all AIOs, nice tubing in terms of hiding the tubes and stuff like that. Well, to be honest, I don't know the reason, but I can presume why. And the answer is quite simple. So for this one, the 360 Lite RGB version, you're paying $99. And for the performance one, which is 240 in P28, you're paying $84.99, so $85. I can't find the price currently for the 360 one, but in general, wow, what's it all about with the price drops? I mean, this is insane for the performance, first of all. Visual aspect is still good. You get quite nice pump block top, you get quite easy installation process, and I'll get to that part later on. You get three RGB fans, which these are quieter than the P28s. But then the performance on P20, well, basically the Galahad 2 Lite 240 performance one is outstanding for $84, $85. So let's break it down with some details. So for the Galahad 2 Lite uh, 240 performance, we have a radiator dimensions 276, 120, 27, with the block dimensions 74, 74, 67. The pump speed goes from 1500 to 3800, and fan dimensions are 124, 120, 28, with the fan speed from 200 to 2500. We have fluid dynamic bearing, airflow is 73.14 CFM, uh, fan air pressure is 5 millimeters H2O, Fan noise level is 29.8 decibels. And yeah, this is, uh, this is something uh, interesting. Now, if we compare that to a 360 non-performance or actually RGB version, what you get is uh, radiator dimensions 397, 120, 27, block dimensions the same, pump speed the same, fan dimensions 120, uh, 120, 28, fan speed 300 to 2500 RPMs, hydraulic bearing on these ones, airflow is 79 CFM, air pressure is 5.1 millimeters HO, fan noise level is 34.8 decibels, and kind of sums it up a bit, but a bit strange because I got the complete opposite from the specs. But let's let's go more into some features. So they have newly designed copper plate with decreased fin distance to prevent substance buildup, which is okay. Then we have liquid coolant pathways straightened for increased water flow and less resistance. And of course, in the 240, we have pre-installed the 28 millimeter T high performance PBT fans. So that might make a difference. But as you would presume, everything is the same. So we have the same tubes, the pump, the block, uh, what else, uh, the radiator. Well, the, tech the size is different to 4360, but I'm talking about the thickness. Different fans, that's the only difference. And it's quite easy to mount it. And I do have to mention that before we go to the benchmark. So what you have to do, and you already noticed that on hydro shift, so you have to remove the original retention brackets, but keep the screws because you're going to use those screws for placing the Lee and Lee retention brackets. And this is really cool. And I'm really digging the new mechanism, what they're using, because you don't have to change anything here on the pump block top because uh, it's the same for Intel and AMD. The only difference is you have a backplate for Intel, and for the AMD, you use these type of um, retention brackets, but they extend to the Intel socket size. And in those terms, what happens here is that you get four 
point connection or point point clock in on the CPU, which actually performs much better than the two point where you use the original retention brackets from AMD. Uh, but regardless of that, when you do that and place those new retention brackets, you have to remove the foil from the CPU block. You place a new foil that you have two of those inside the plastic bag. You have to remove all the um, hexagons that are inside that foil and place it on the CPU block. No, you're not going to leave it there. You're just going to put thermal paste over it. And in those hexagons, you have a couple of those, I think about 10 approximately. You place your thermal paste on it and you use the spatula to spread it across evenly. So try to find the position in terms of, well, basically try to cover all the hexagons properly and evenly. After you're done, you remove the foil and you have equal hexagons on the CPU block base plate and you're good to go. You're good to place the CPU block on the CPU and just tie up four screws. That is it. The difference in connection type. So P28 use uh, PWM connection. They're all daisy chained uh, in the connection because they're already pre-applied, pre-installed on the radiator. And for the pump block top in both uh, scenarios, we have addressable RGB 5 volts uh, three pin connection and four pin PWM. Now for the Galahad 2 Lite 360 RGB, they're also pre-connected to the radiator and pre-connected in between with daisy chain connection. And you have some sort of a proprietary cable, which ends up to daisy chainable addressable RGB 5 volt strip pin connector for lights, of course, and PWM to separate the pump from the fans. Now for the benchmarks, this is uh, going to be a bit strange, but the same configuration, the same position of the radiator, the same ports on the motherboard. Nothing has changed except for the size of the radiator and for the fans. And this is what I stated at the beginning, why I don't like these type of things that happen to me. Because I don't know how can I actually give credit in terms of how can I evaluate such 240 when it outperforms a 360. It happened before, it really did but I don't like it because of it. And yeah, so I'm going to go with the Galahad 2 Lite uh, 360 RGB first. So in AIDA 64 Extreme Edition, I'm using MD Ryzen 7 9800X3D paired up with MSI MPG X870E carbon Wi-Fi. The CPU goes up to 67 degrees and the clock speed goes up to 4940 megahertz. Now, immediately when we go with Galahad 2 Lite 240 performance, you get CPU at 69 degrees, so that's 2 degrees higher, and you get, of course, lower clock speeds at 4870 megahertz. And I thought, yeah, okay, that's quite normal, because what you get is a small radiator by 120, and that kind of makes sense. But then I went to Cinebench, and of course Cinebench has to spoil the fun. Uh, the thermals are in Cinebench 40 Galahad 2 Lite 360 RGB from 80 to 81. Majority is 80, being at 6, 4R81. So yeah, the clock speed is quite regular in those terms, uh, 5095 to 5105. Yeah, that's quite all right. And then we go with Cinebench scores. So basically an average would be 21,420, 30, with the first going at 21,400, and this is the last, well, the highest one, 21,493. Outstanding, outstanding, because it goes for $100. It has 200 Cinebench points less than some high-end coolers, and it performs quite good. And the pump isn't noisy. And even these fans that they state above 30 decibels, they also aren't noisy. But then we go to Cinebench with Galahad 2 Lite 240 uh, performance. Uh, constant thermals, 81. So the thermals are higher, but the clock speed is also higher. Starting at 5095 and eventually going the highest at 5115. That's again solid. The major, the the minor difference between those clock speeds from a 360 to 40, it's irrelevant. But the 240 did keep the clocks higher, and that's shown, of course, in the benchmarks: 21,709 and the high score: 21,763. Which 
I don't know how to explain. Same configuration on the fans when we're talking about the speed, same configuration on the pump. Literally everything is the same. I didn't change anything except for the AIO. Same clock speed on the memory, same processor, everything. Literally everything is the same. And the 240 outperformance at 360 in those terms, which is also by $15 cheaper. I don't know how this happened. I don't know if this is some sort of a one out of a hundred, but it happened. And the one thing that I also do have to mention is that these fans, even though they stated on their uh, official website that they go above 30 decibels, I think it was 32 or 34, can't remember. But the performance ones, the P28, were louder at the same RPM in terms of adjusting in BIOS compared to these ones. So you can go for $15 cheaper, higher performance by, I would say, 300 to 200 Cinebench points. You get more noise, but you get a smaller radiator. And then we go with 360, you pay extra $15, you get RGB fans if you want RGB fans, but you get 200 to 300 Cinebench points less, with less noise. So I think in both scenarios, both are really good. Specifically because the 240 really, really performed well. And then we go with this one, which is also, a, well, basically a cool RGB uh, AIO, which looks and performs also quite solidly. And keeping the 9800X3D at quite nice uh, thermals. So in, in that sense, I'm really disappointed that I couldn't test out the Performance 360 just, just to see the direct comparison in 360 AAOs. In this sense, 240 compared to 360, I don't know. I don't know. I honestly don't have a clue why is this happening, but uh, at least I can show you the results, what I got, and give you some insights. So yeah, Lee and Lee released four AAOs. We have 240 and 360. Galahad 2 light RGB and Galahad 2 light performance. You can choose whatever suits you best, whatever design you're going with your build or anything similar to that. And let's give it a PC crazy best buy badge. Why? Because the performance is quite approved with the price tag and it's quite catchy. It's quite catchy with that. Uh, even though, of course, we have Arctic, we have Be Quiet in those terms and they do perform also quite good. Don't get me wrong. And you also have a quite nice price, specifically Arctic. But Lee and Lee with this one is entering that segment as well, giving you RGB, giving you great performance and giving you a great price. I do have to give it a Best Buy badge without a doubt because it really does perform great for the price. And yeah, that's all there is to it. If you're looking for these two, you can check out the links in the description below. And finally, if this video gave you some ideas about new AOs from Lee and Lee, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, click the notification bell, and I will see you quite shortly in a new one. Bye-bye.